Welcome explorers, my name is Zia, I'm with the Boboa Park Cultural Partnership and we are excited to have you join us today for this virtual explorer experience with the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. Um, today, Katie Titus with the San Diego Model Railroad Museum will give us a sneak peek of what the museum has been up to during this holiday season. Let's check it out. Park Explorers, welcome to the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. My name is Katie Titus, I'm the Marketing and Community Engagement Coordinator here at the museum, and I'm so excited to show you some of our holiday offerings and holiday displays. So here on the SDMRM Christmas tree, you can find the Jewels of the Season, which are a collection of intricate handcrafted ornaments generously on loan from the Timken Museum of Art, where they have been on display every year for over two decades. While the Timken is closed for visitor experience enhancements, we're giving these beautiful decorations a home away from home. They are made by two San Diego artisans, some ornaments taking two days to make, some ornaments taking two weeks to make. And they are made with precious stones, gems, and filigree collected from around the world. And we're so happy to have them here at the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. This holiday season, we're also proudly collaborating with Walt Disney's Carolwood Barn and the Carolwood Foundation to bring you the Carolwood Pacific, Walt's Magical Railroad, which tells the story of Walt Disney's railroading past as a young boy growing up in Missouri and how his love for trains influenced his famous works. We have a variety of artifacts on loan from Walt's barn, some of which were owned by Walt himself, including this switch stand, which was used to change the direction of his backyard railroad. But we won't be showing you everything today because we're working on digitizing the exhibit so everyone from home and around the world can view these treasures. Welcome to our toy train gallery, which is brought to you courtesy of the San Diego Three Railers Club. So this gallery is a celebration of all things toy trains and during the holiday season, it is completely decked out for Christmas. As you can see behind me, we have some sleigh bells ringing, we have some ski lifts running, and we have some people skating in a winter wonderland. Um, this particular layout is called a three rail because there are three rails in the tracks, and the track in the middle is electric, which is what powers all of the trains running that you see around me. The Toy Train Gallery is one of five layouts that we have here at the museum. We have layouts in all different scales, sizes, and regions of the American Southwest. So we hope you come and check us out fairly soon uh, when we are not closed for COVID-19. We are open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we also do have memberships available if you'd like to get a full year of fun. In the meantime, please check out www.sdmrm.org for our online gift shop, our online exhibits, and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us. Joining us today, we have Katie Titus. Um, hey, Katie, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Katie. I'm a San Diego native. I grew up here, uh, and I'm the marketing and community engagement coordinator here at the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. And um, Katie, we have some questions. Um, one of them is asking, are the trains to scale? Not Quite sure. <laughs> yes. So all of the layouts are to scale and the trains that run on them are to scale. Each scale differs uh, depending on the layout, but we have HO scale, O scale, N scale, and an outdoor uh, layout that is in G scale. So, and yes, everything that runs is to scale and 
Sometimes, if the operators choose, they even have them running at period accurate scale speeds. What is the Muddle Railroad doing online right now? We are doing so much online. So we've been hosting uh, different virtual events throughout the last nine months. But the most uh, significant things we have to offer online are two virtual exhibits. One is called Iron Women, and it is all about the often unsung achievements of women on the railroad. And one is called 75 Years of Thomas, which celebrates the legacy of Thomas the Tank Engine um, and the book series that he is from, the Railway series, which debuted 45, now almost 46, years ago. Um, so those are both live on our website, free and open to the public. We also have a page called Trains and Tots, which is all activities for kids. You can find story time readings, coloring pages, and educational resources. So if you have a kiddo who wants to learn more about trains, the Trains and Tots page is going to be the place to go. That's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we actually have a question from River, who's seven years old, is asking, how do trains work? It depends on the train that you're talking about, River. So there are three types of trains. There is a steam train, a diesel train, and an electric or sometimes called a maglev train. Steam trains are the oldest trains. They're the ones that you see in the old movies. If you're familiar with Harry Potter or the Chronicles of Narnia, those trains in those movies are steam trains and they are run by burning coal, which turns into steam. And again, we have a full length video online that goes into it in detail. Diesel trains run off of diesel fuel, which is a lot like gasoline. And so it works similar to a car, but on a much bigger scale. And electric trains or maglev, which is short for magnetic levitation, use electricity and magnets to move the train along the track. These are the fastest trains. These are the ones you see in Asia, you know, all across Japan and Korea and China. And they're the ones that can go over 300 miles an hour. But here in the United States, diesel trains are the most, diesel and electric trains are the most common that you're gonna see and ride on yourself. And how many people does it take to run all the trains at the museum? Um, it can depend. Uh, the filming, the, the video that you just saw, we accomplished that with two model railroad operators um, and a total of, I believe, four trains were running on that layout at that point. But, you know, especially during non-pandemic times, we can have six, seven people in a layout running multiple trains all at once, but you can do as few as two or one, like one to two people can run a model railroad layout. If a model train breaks, how do you fix it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes I wish I, sometimes I wish I knew that, um, but we have a whole group of very dedicated railroad modelers who really can get in the re get in the weeds and really tinker with the trains but usually it's caused by a loss of electric connectivity between the train and its rails so that usually involves looking into the electric wiring making sure the train's wheels are perfectly on the track they have to be perfectly placed or the train will not run. So usually it's an electrical issue that is easily fixed. Sometimes if the train or the track hasn't been cleaned in a while, which we always make sure to be incredibly diligent about cleaning, that can cause problems. So sometimes you just gotta give it a good scrub. <laughs> we have another question from River. What was the first train? So it's not, some people argue over what was the first train. However, the first steam engine, you know, the engine's the most important part of the train that makes it go. The first steam engine was developed in the 1830s by a father-son duo with the last name Stevenson, and they had a business together, and they created what is known as the world's first modern steam engine, which was called the Stevenson rocket. Even though it was called the rocket, it could only go about 24 to 36 miles an hour, which is normally the speed your parents drive when you're driving around town. 
So it was nowhere near as fast as the trains that we know of today. Does the San Diego Mato Railroad have Thomas the Tank Engine? Yes, we do have um, some Thomas the Tank Engine in different sizes and different scales. Uh, back in August, we did Thomas Takeover Week where everything on our website, everything in our social media was a celebration of Thomas the Tank Engine. And there are plenty of videos of Thomas making his way around our layouts. But for the most part, our operators and modelers supply their own trains from home. We obviously have some in our collection, but modelers supply a lot. So if somebody wants to bring in Thomas the Tank Engine, they just bring in Thomas the Tank Engine. And it's a really fun time. Have you collaborated with other groups in the park before? Yes, we have. Now, most of those collaborations, I will say, have, were long before I was brought on uh, to the team. But usually in non-pandemic times, the Timpkin will give us some ornaments to decorate our beautiful tree. And we will provide them with a Christmas train to run in their lobby. Now, of course, with the Timpkin being closed, we didn't do that. But that's usually something we do just about every year. And we've collaborated with other institutions in Balboa Park throughout the years. We've collaborated with the Del Mar Fair, doing a special traveling exhibit there. Um, and we have another collaboration currently with the Coronado Library. So we love being a part of the Balboa Park community. We love being part of the San Diego community. And we love um, working with other institutions to do something really special. And another question here, what is the fastest train in the world? The fastest train in the world, frankly, it's a record that keeps changing all the time. But I believe there is a specific bullet train, that's the name for it, in Japan that can go over 300 miles an hour. Um, that's the most recent world record that I've seen. But with advancements in technology, that might not be true tomorrow. <laughs> How can someone become a modeler in the museum? How can someone become a modeler? That is a great question. Um, model railroading is really a mixture of so many different um, skills and like concepts to understand. But a great place to start is one with our model railroading clubs. So the museum is home to four different model railroading clubs. Um, if you are a kid or a teen, uh, all of them have youth programs. If not, then the clubs, you know, accept membership and they will help guide you through the process of whatever you want to learn. We also have an interactive course um, that kids or adults can take. It's via video, um, but we're always available to answer questions called Building a Model Railroad. So you purchase the lesson, we send you a link to the videos, and we send you a package with all the materials you'll need to build your own little stretch of model railroad. Um, since I started this position, I've also found there's an amazing online community of people on YouTube and Facebook and email newsletters who are constantly trading tips. So if you're considering starting your own model railroad layout, you are not alone. There are plenty of resources out there, but building a model railroad and membership to one of our model railroad clubs is a great start. How many model trains are in the museum? How many? Again, that varies from day to day because the modelers and operators bring their own trains from home. So we can have probably four, sometimes five trains running on each of our five layouts. Again, this is in pre-pandemic times when we don't have to limit any sort of capacity. Um, we, yeah, we can have like five, sometimes even six, depending on the layout, different trains running at the same time um, across our layouts. So about 25 trains running at any one time. And I think this is a perfect question right after that one. How do you run all the trains at once? So it's largely electricity. That's what actually powers the models. Um, some of them are battery operated, but most of them use an electric current that actually goes 
through the layout itself. So it's a lot of really complex electrical wiring. And then it's a lot of logistics management to make sure that nobody crashes or derails, which definitely does happen in the modeling world. It's much less stressful than in the real world. Um, and so that's just making sure that the modelers are communicating with each other when there's a train on the layout, when they're taking it off, what direction they're going, if they're going north or south, um, how the speed they're going. And the, the modelers have really gotten the hang of knowing when to stop, when to stop a train, when to start it. It's a really intricate and fascinating process. And what's awesome for our modelers is some of them actually use timetables from the era that their layout represents. So example, we have a layout that represents the 1950s and they'll find actual schedules from the 1950s and use that to guide their operations of the model. Do the layouts um, at the museum remain the same or do they change according to the season or time of year? So the layouts themselves stay the same, mostly because they are depicting real life places um, across Southern California. So you're not going to see the, the landscape drastically change. However, some of them do choose to decorate for the season. Uh, the three rail toy train gallery that you guys saw in the video, they go the most big with their decorations. They have spider webs and talking witches during Halloween. They have red, white, and blue everywhere for 4th of July. Um, and as you saw in the video, they have holiday scenes for Christmas. So, um, and the, the toy train gallery is the only layout in the museum that doesn't represent a real place. So they can go a little bit more crazy with the decor and it fits with the atmosphere of their layout. But most of the other layouts um, stay the same except for there will be instances where a train only ran in this place in the winter time. This train only came through in the winter, so they will only run it in the winter. We have a question from Oliver, who's age five. What is the silliest thing in the museum, like the shark in the pool? I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a shark in the pool. Um, the silliest thing in the museum, um, I would say the wedding gone wrong. There in the uh, three rail toy train gallery, there is a wedding that has gone south. Sounds like they're not going to be a happy couple. She's running away. And I always find that very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie, do you have a favorite train or area in the museum? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I do like... I have lots of favorite little vignettes and areas in the museum. Um, the Carrizo Gorge comes to mind, which again is a real life place that's like way out east of here. Um, but we have that gorge modeled in HO scale in one of our layouts and N scale in another. And both of them are just jaw dropping. Those are beautiful. Um, in terms of trains, I love seeing the Santa Fe Chief go around our La Mesa layout or La Mesa Club to have to be Pass layout because the layout is so green and the Santa Fe Chief is this brilliant red and the contrast between the two is just beautiful to watch. Will there be any new layouts in the coming year? Not that I know of. Our most recent layout addition was our outdoor layout, which was completed in 2015 in time for the Babel Park Centennial. I know that we want to continue to add to that layout and spruce it up and make sure that it looks beautiful for our guests, but there are no plans to add another layout. I mean, we have 27,000 square feet of layout, so we're doing pretty well right now. Um, and plus, I think, you know, it, I didn't even understand this when I first came on board. Building a layout is a years, sometimes decades long labor of love. One of our layouts, the La Mesa Tehachapi Pass, has been under construction for, I believe, since 2003. And they're still adding things and tweaking things. So model railroading is a years long you know, labor of love and the 
layouts that we do have are coming along beautifully. Is there an estimate of when the landscaping, the landscaping of the layout that includes the, and I might mispronounce this, Teha, Teha Shopee Loop will be finished? Tehachapi. I know. It's, it's <laughs> strange. I, I had trouble pronouncing it when I first got here. Um, there's no estimate currently, especially because the layout is completely being built by volunteers who give their time out of the love of the art of model railroading. And with the fact that we have to keep closing and limiting capacity and limiting hours due to COVID-19, it's hard to have a set schedule, but every time somebody can come in and work on the layout, a little, get, a little bit more gets done. Is there anything else um, upcoming with the museum or anything else that you'd like to share with us? Um, again, as I mentioned, please check out our virtual exhibits. Um, again, if you go to our homepage and scroll down to what's online, we also have an online gift shop um, that is selling Thomas the Tank Engine books and games, and there's lots of toys, including toy trains. Um, if you would like to pick those up for a train lover in your life. And the online gift shop is offering curbside pickup. So I know today is the last day to get uh, USPS shipping before Christmas, but if you're worried about getting it on time, arrange for free curbside pickup and a member of our team will reach out to you. Uh, we are also in the midst of raising $40,000 to celebrate our upcoming 40th anniversary, uh, which is going to be in December of 2021. And we're already at almost 20% of our goal before the year's even started, which is amazing. We are so grateful to everyone who's given. But if you feel compelled to make a tax deductible donation to help us meet our goal, you can visit sdmrm.org slash donate. If you donate more than $40, you'll be placed on our digital thank you honor wall. Um, and again, we are so grateful to our members and our donors uh, who continue to support us through closure. Thank you so much, Katie. And also thank you everyone at the San Diego Model Railroad um, Explorers and San Diego Model Railroad members. Thank you so much for joining us for this virtual explorer experience and for more of Ball Park content, including live chat and videos across the park, visit culturalpartnership.org slash updates. We hope you enjoyed this Explorer experience and we wish you happy holidays. <laughs> yes, happy holidays from everyone here at the San Diego Model Railroad Museum. If you loved what you saw in the video, our social media uh, is chock full of photos and videos of our trains. So feel free to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Zia, and we hope to be able, fingers crossed, to see all of our Balboa Park explorers as soon as it's safe to do so. Stay healthy, everyone.